Hey guys, what's good? Mike here, Lakers Talk. Let's talk Lakers basketball. In this video, I want to talk about Lonzo. I'm going to touch on Lonzo, but I want to talk about, um, you know, I really want to talk about how I'm thinking about our team and approaching kind of um, evaluating players and things like that because uh, I was tweeting back and forth with somebody. We were talking about Lonzo Ball and <clears throat> whether or not like he didn't play in the fourth quarter yesterday. People are like, we really hope he gets traded to a team that where he, you know, that where he can flourish. Or somebody was pointing out the fact that with LeBron James, he, he's not going to, it's not working in a sense where the ball is not in his hand. He's kind of just, he gives the ball up and he's kind of sitting back, whatever, right? I actually tweeted back and I was like thinking, to be honest with you, Lonzo Ball is still effective. He's still valuable on the team. What that means, though, is that we have to, we had our expectations of Lonzo Ball, the way he ran, like the way he ran UCLA, and the way he came in with the Lakers, we're thinking he's going to be the Jason Kidd. He's going to be an outlier. He's going to be this guy that creates the system or that runs the system and we kind of build around him. He really had, you know, and he could, he still could second year. He had the Jason Kidd effect in my opinion, right? Whereas you see just Jason Kidd kind of just run teams, right? And you saw like Steve Nash run teams throughout their career. The question is uh, to be determined if Lonzo Ball is going to get that chance to do that, whether it's going to be with the Lakers or some other team, right? And I say that because, Truthfully, LeBron is with us for the next four years. He's not going to be running the Lakers for the next four years. Lonzo, that is. He's not going to have the ball in his hand. The system is not going to be built around Lonzo. It's going to be built around LeBron James. Having said that, I tweeted back at this. Uh, I tweeted back and I said, Lonzo Ball truthfully is not the ball in his hands type of point guard. Okay, he's not Chris Paul. It's not like you're limiting Chris Paul's, you know, you know what I mean? Like Lonzo Ball is a different type of point guard. He runs and he dishes, he runs, you know, he pushes the ball, he gives a, you know, he, he, he outlet passes, he, he pushes the ball up quick. He, he's a point guard that gets the ball out of his hands quickly, right? So that's one thing. So the fact that the ball is not in his hands and LeBron James is there and the, the ball is in LeBron James' hand and other players' hands, that's Lonzo's game anyway. Now, and then you have all the other stuff that Lonzo does well. Defense. He hustles. He rebounds. He has a high IQ. So when he's on the floor, he's going to make the right play. The only thing now that we now have to come to terms with from Lonzo is the fact that I don't, I mean, he has a quirk. I don't think he's going to, I don't think this is going to change overnight. Okay. His, his inability to score consistently. He's going to always be inconsistent. Um, his shot is going to be inconsistent from the outside. His layups, Pete <clears throat> Lakers film room made a nice video detailing Lonzo Ball, not, I mean, like what, like now that he's been driving to the basket over the last three games, you can see that it's totally, it's completely unnatural for, Le, for, for Lonzo to do that because he, he, uh, he honestly, he's an NBA player, has trouble finishing at the rim. Like he's moving way too fast. He, you know, it's not easy for him to just do a layup, right? And, and Pete was in his video was actually explaining the details on what he would have to do to fix his layup issues. I mean, this is an NBA player and you can make a video on how to fix an NBA player's layup issues. That means that <clears throat> pushing the ball that quick or uh, driving to the rim and laying the ball up is not natural for you. If you can, if you're like one of the best players in the world, can make it to the NBA, and you have issues 
laying the ball up, that means you're not used to doing that. Lonzo is not used to, to attacking and making layups or whatever. Point here is, I think we had we all had high hopes for Lonzo. We thought he could hit around 40% from three, and we, you know, the system would be built around him and he'd make everybody everybody better, the Lonzo effect. By the way, I saw somebody tweet me um, a picture saying that the Lakers are like five and one when Lonzo plays, or six and seven when he doesn't play, something like that. Interesting. So the Lonzo effect, it, it was called. But <clears throat> outside of that, if we lower our and I'm about to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start lowering my standards on individuals. Uh, Lonzo in particular, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma. I'm not going to be nitpicking at these guys game to game. They're going to score a 24, 25, 27 point game here and there. Then they're going to go to score seven points. All right. They're going to score 15 points. They're going to score six. Brandon's going to get 17. He's going to get 27 one game at one point. Then he's going to get 11 or whatever, right? They're going to average around that 15, 16, 17 mark. Lonzo's going to average around that 10, 11, whatever. I'm not worried about the guys. They're, to me, these guys aren't outliers. I just don't see it in any of these guys. They're not outliers where I think they're going to be consistently scoring 25 points a game. They're not. That's not them. But what they are, they are valuable. And that's how I'm looking at these guys now. They are valuable to the team. They're pieces. Lonzo was a piece. He can't score. I'm, I'm, I'm lowering my expectations on him when it comes to his scoring abilities. I don't, I'm not tripping too much on Lonzo Ball. It's whatever he, he can keep working at his shot, keep working on his layups, keep working on trying to, you know, to be consistent, score, and to chip in where he can, when he can. We don't need him to score 20 points a game. But that's not a reason to trade him and say, hey, you know what? We we need it'd be nice for him to go to a team where he can flourish. I don't think anytime soon in his young career he's gonna get on a team where he can flourish like he did at UCLA. Or at the sense that his first year with the Lakers, because he was a number two pick, and so we kind of built, we kind of made our system around him, pushing the ball up the floor. At this point, I think he's gonna have to get in. He's gonna have to, he's gonna have to get in where he fits in. Like he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to learn to fit in on a team, and he's gonna have to learn to fit in with the Lakers and learn to fit in at the position that he's at right now, and continue to do all the other things. And and you're starting to see the rumblings come out. Like he's saying, I don't care about scoring. I just want to win. You see, Luke Walton says we don't need um, the scoring from Lonzo and things like that. And I think that's where it's going to come down. His value is going to come down to that hustle plays being that that player on the floor, that high IQ player that makes the right plays. And because he's on the floor, he makes everybody else better because he gets them shots. And when they're not being honest on him, he can drive to the hole and, and try to score or whatever. And he's going to hit some outside shots here and there. But for the most part, he's going to be valuable for his high iq moving the ball high iq moving the ball uh, making the right reads defense rebounding hustle and the icing on the cake will be the scoring that's not going to be the focal point for Lon for lonzo and i think that's where he's going to make his bread and butter in his young career and because of that it's still valuable and what, what i'm looking at i'm not looking at guys like individual i'm not nitpicking at these guys like scoring abilities so much I'm looking at overall as a team. How do we build the right team? Um, how do we build the right team? And we need those pieces. That's why I was like yesterday, I don't want to make a trade so quick. Bar Bradley Bill will consistently give you 25 points each and every game. He has that makeup in his game. But I think we need some defensive players. We need that. Back in my day, back in my early day, you had a guy like on the Kings, uh, Doug Christie, who wasn't really a scorer, but he was a decent, really good NBA player. A guy that on a deep playoff team, the Sacramento Kings were when they had um, Chris Webber, you know, uh, Jason Williams and them, um, uh, Mike Bibby. You had Chris, you had like Doug Christie, who was one of those players who started. And because he can give you a lot of stuff. 
He made he was high IQ, can play defense, can 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 uh, defend multiple positions, and then you had other guys who do the scoring. That's what I think is going to come down with Lonzo. That um, he's not going to be this. 20 point score guy or the Jason Kidd, but he's going to do those other things like I'm saying like the Doug Christie's like the you know You you can probably in the in the past the last 10 years you go to different team different key playoff teams And you got that one guy who can defend it can do a lot of things smart guy on the team Lonzo's, Lonzo's gonna be that a little bit better than those guys, but ultimately he's going to be those things so I'm looking at Good pieces that we need to continue to hold on to that's valuable for our team And when we're making a playoff run and rely on other people to do the scoring like um, you know and 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 Kind of identify You know other pieces, but I don't think Lonzo I Think Lonzo can contribute and he's still valuable um, and he you know so we got to look at him from from that standpoint, like where he's still valuable in all those other areas outside of the the scoring. And so um, I think other people are going to have to step up. And that's where I think we're going to find um, we're going to have to look to other players and other pieces for our scoring and things like that. But I'm not looking to trade Lonzo right now. I'm not looking to move him or nitpick his game here and there. I, I, I think, you know, obviously he's got a quirk shooting layups or whatever and it's going to be with them for a while until he figures that out and i don't think he's going to figure that out anytime soon i mean he's a grown man now and he's, he's still growing he's going to get better he's going to do a little more things in his career but for the most part um it is what it is right now anyway that's my thoughts on lonzo um we're in between games we play tomorrow see what happens anyway hit me up in the comments below let me your thoughts thanks for commenting like and subscribing i like your boy i'll get with you tomorrow peace